And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied to, just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. Now imagine yourself witnessing this event described in the scriptures. <laughs> uh, what, must shock, what, what, what most shocks you or surprises you? Let me get my glasses on. What most shocks you or surprises you about this? What she just read. C come on, come on, come on. That's what, come on. Yeah. Hand that to mama. Yes. Go ahead and say, go ahead. That's it. That's it. That's it? Okay. That's so you give it. me a mic, I ain't going to stop. I'm going to stop. Amen. That's where Lillian gets that from, okay? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But you're right. Anybody else? That's a good point. That they both agree they conspired. They conspired against the Holy Spirit. Anybody else? You heard that story? What else stood out in your mind? That's one thing. Oh, Richard. That's Richard. That God killed him for lying. <laughs> that God that's killed him for right. lying. Yes. yes. That always got me up like, Lord. Yes. What about your mercy? Yes. 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 And I remember, see, some of y'all out there, I remember when I got saved, I was real radical, and, 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 and my mom would tell you, I got up and my, I, I, I think, Ange, was Angela here? I, where's she at? She, she come baby. back? Oh, oh. so, yeah. But make a long story short, um, I remember God gave me the word when I was praying at our church, our home church. I said, somebody, if somebody, somebody's going to get up here and die if you don't get right with the Lord. And I was going to a traditional church at the time, but God was, spirit was moving in that church and God was filling people with the spirit. And he was he was doing it. He was he was he was transitioning that church into a move of God. And I never forget when I left home. I mean, to go to college. I remember Angela called me back. Somebody died. One of the deacons was preaching in Bible study. He just dropped dead. And he was one of the main ones that uh, uh, got into leadership. I saw there were certain people that were stopping the move of God. Mm. And he was one. He was acting like he was with it. But he was the main one that was stopping it. Wow. And Wednesday night Bible study, he dropped dead while he was teaching the word. Mm. And for two years, God said, Son, I said, if it takes, I, and I said, if it's me, I, now you say, Lord, if it's me, kill me if I'm not right. Jesus. But Lord, if you want to move God in so seriously, God, I won't name the person, but you know, then the deacon dropped dead while he was doing the Bible study at church. Then I used to preach about that before it happened two years. I, I would say, somebody's going to drop dead in this church. There's so much foolishness going on. Somebody's going to drop dead in this church. And, and, and if it's me, Lord, take me out right now. I would stop in my sermon and say, Lord, if it's me, take me out. But Lord, don't let the foolishness stay. Jesus. And this individual, just Bible study, boom, God dropped him. Stroke. Ambulance came, couldn't revive him. Young man in his 40s. Not one of the old deacons, one of the youngest deacons that was causing some of the mm. most trouble. Are you with me? And so it's not, it, 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 people don't understand, when you get close to God, you can't play with God. Yeah. You hurt yourself. See, notice this, if it's not a physical death, it's a death that, in you that dies inwardly. Yeah. When you become religious, you kill the move of God in your life. Yeah. So you can't get with what God is doing. So you, you, you get acquainted with religious things, but you can't get into the relationship that God's called you to because you, you know that. Are, are y'all with me? Yeah. It's danger in becoming religious. 
and not move it into relationship. Yeah. God wants you into divine relationship with him. You know, it, it, again, it's like this, and, and I used to sh share this analogy in my own church. I've been in the way. The lady says, I've been in the way for 40 years. I've been in the way. Yeah. I've been in the way for 40 years. You can't tell me nothing, son. I met, I, I met some people like this and some mothers. I've been in the way. 40 years, and the Lord spoke to me and said, you know what, that's your problem. You've been in the way. You need to get out of the way, and you need to find a way, which is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And let that become real in yes. your life. Amen? Yes. And get out of the way. Sometimes we keep ourselves from moving to that next level because we don't believe the goodness of those. So let's look a couple things. They conspired. I what else, to that that was shocking was that she came in later not knowing what happened. So God was actually, in a sense, giving her a chance to come correct. Because they, they didn't come in together and ask, and they both dropped dead. She came in later, and they asked the question again, which is an example that God was given a second chance. She could have said the right answer, which was the truth, or lie. And she chose, of course, to lie and go in agreement with that conspiracy with her husband not knowing that he had already passed, and then she dropped dead. So that illustrates shockingly to me well, that we all just, be held accountable. Well, she said, I was just following my husband. I'll follow because he's the head. Yes. Is that, yes? No, I'm saying that's what her excuse Is that right? Been. It's not right, though. But that's well, what she, yeah. Well, why is it been. not right? Because your wife, well, I have my own will, and I can choose to do right or not. Going back to what was said earlier, she could have held her husband in accountability and said, no, we need to align with this. Even going back to Adam and Eve, one could have said, no, we're not going to eat from. But see, it always goes back. We have a personal responsibility for our own walk. And we can't point the finger to, to God. Yes. And we have the to, truth. we're going to be held accountable no matter how much we say, well, that person told me this and that person was, God's going to hold us accountable for our own you decisions. You know truth. Yes. There's times, come on, you were saying this to me this morning when we were even reviewing this, there's times when you see, oh, yes, when one of us may get weak in our conviction, and it's always why it says two are better than one, because I can hold you accountable and say, no, honey, though you may feel weak right now, remember the word. I'll and talk what about was, you. I was okay. going to talk about me. So, Come yeah, on. so when I get weak, Come on. you will say to me, honey, no, remember what God's word says now. Stay positive on this point. Though things may get tight in this area, you may not understand why this is working out. God's word says this. And he'll hold me accountable to what I've declared in the past that I see God doing and in my life. And when I get weak, she, there's times I may, if I'm, if I'm speaking something opposite of what the word of God says, she holds me accountable to yes. it. See, again, as couples, you submit to one another and you hold each other accountable to truth. Amen? The truth, yeah. And so what happens is, so, 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 so guess what? What bothered me when I first saw that first two is that he, she didn't check him. Yes. Yes. Did you hear me? Right. She didn't check him. She had a chance to check him. Look, it says, and look, now a man named Anas, together with his wife, sir, sold a piece of property. They sold it. She got watches with money. And, 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 and some of you remember now, something I do. And some, let me tell you something. It gets different when the money gets in your hand. Mm -hmm. folk, folk will make a whole bunch of promises. I, you know what? I had people tell me they were going to give me the down payment before I knew church so many times in the last nine years. If he just prayed, I get blessed this way. Right? And I pray, and then the, the money comes, and then I see you give me a fifth of what you said you're going to give. And I keep on moving. I don't hold it. Are you with me? Right. Because I say, Lord, that, God, you got to deal with that. That's hard. But my wife will tell you, I'm in real estate. And early on, when we started this church, God told me to come off my job, say, I want you to finish with the houses that you have left. I want you to dedicate your time to full-time ministry. Told me to tell her to come off her job. And he says, I want, then, then this is what I want you to do. I want you to give 50% of what you make on every house. I had four houses at the time. I want you to get, get it was during the dead season. I'm gonna get, I want you to give 50% of it to the church for the budget. Not to get back to yourself, for the budget of the church. I said, now, God, okay. I, felt, I prayed for the Lord. I told my wife. Mm -hmm. I first thing I told her, so she could hold me in accountability to it. Right. Next thing I did, I had three brothers, Simon, another brother named Maurice. Richard, I think you were there, too. I told Brother Russ, I said, okay, God spoke to me. When I get close these houses, I'm supposed to give 40%, I mean 50% of it to the house of God. Mm -hmm. I need y'all to hold me accountable to that. Mm -hmm. Now you say, well, Pastor, you're a person of integrity. Why did you have to go tell other people? Why? Because I understand when that money gets in your hand, yeah. the flesh gets you start thinking about, well, you know, they don't need 50%. Maybe I'll give, you know, 30% here really and then 20% to my children. That's the 50. That's still God. 
You know, we start, you know, you start rationalizing the stuff and not saying that you get to keep another 50 percent that you never had. Now, let me tell you something. When I committed to doing that within 30 days, yes. all four of those houses sold. Yes. In one month. In dead season. And I gave 50 percent. Actually, I gave more. Amen. Mm -hmm. that was, Amen. Are you with me? Yes. And so guess what? And we were blessed because of it. Yes. See, it was, it, it's God, it's, it, it, it's stewardship. We talked about, what, remember my wife was, remember this early on, I remember eight years ago, somebody came, and yeah. they were like, pray for me, my taxes, I have this big tax situation, and if God just bring us out. I'm going to definitely sow a seed. And I'm I gonna, wanna... They gave us the amount, we're gonna, I'm going to sow yeah. this much. Was I get it or not? I'm going to sow this much. So the big money, the money got freeze them out of that tax situation, and then they come Sunday. <laughs> And say, Pastor, um, what say it, honey? What well, is it? When you tithe, do you tithe off the net or the gross? And are we really supposed to tithe off of taxes? Anyway? All, of a sudden, see, all of a sudden, they had they, they, they didn't believe in tithing anymore. Yeah. After the money, because he's looking at money, and I, that's a lot of money. I said, but you said you're gonna give this amount. Wait, I said, no, Lord I didn't say that. I said, no, you just said, what did the Lord speak? I said, what did the Lord speak to you? He said, well, I know what they Because I'm not going to play rationalization games. Right. Do what God, if God didn't tell you yeah, to do it, don't, you, you came and told me God said this. Right. So as a believer, forget past, as a believer, I'm going to hold you accountable to, you know, God. it's just like me saying, uh, when I got the money, maybe I should just tithe off my profit, not my revenue. Because, mm. you know, because I made $10,000 in the deal. I mean, it was more than that, but I'm saying, but maybe I just wasn't, because I, maybe, maybe I should, you know, but when I deduct all my expenses, <laughs> it's really this amount. It's not first fruit. It's really 3000 And so 300 is a big difference from 1000 Are, are y'all with me? Yes, yes. So we start rationalizing, rationalization, playing these games with the Lord. And so that's why it's important that you have accountability. You have accountability in your relationships. You have accountability with, with brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Because I was humbling. I was the pastor. And I said, hold me to this. But you know why I did that? Because I saw my pastor do that. I saw Pastor Lockett. I'll never forget. He, he, when, when the, the church, I remember one anniversary. We had evangelists come on. Ricardo Carwell. I mean, Ricardo Carr. Richard Carr. And they raised $100,000 in the service for him. I think it was like his 10th year anniversary. $100,000 right there in the service for him. And he, he got there. i never forget. He told the elders and he got the ministers. I mean, I'm, the young guys. My son, I was in college at the time, said, now, none of this money will touch my hand. And he said, elders, don't try to slip it back to me. It's mm -hmm. all going toward the building. That's true. God spoke that to me. And he says, I'm telling you all. I don't, you know, he said, don't, he says, I don't want it. He says, I don't, he says, I don't trust me. And I got to be obedient to the Lord. Amen. I was in service. God spoke to me. And I need somebody to help me, to keep me accountable to that. And then he looked at one of the elders that loved him so much. He says, and don't you sneak it to me. He says, don't, don't find a way to give it, to, to bless me a little bit. He says, no, God says, all of this needs to go to the building fund. Mm. Are you with me? I saw that type of accountability. Are you with me? Yeah. I saw that type of truthfulness. And that man never wanted, became a multimillionaire, never wanted for the rest of his life. He lived within his means. He blessed people. Amen? Amen. He didn't, he didn't buy a big Rolls Royce, even though he could afford it one. He drove a simple car. Hmm. I remember they bought him a Cadillac. He took it back Jeep. and got a Jeep. Church yeah. brought him a Fleetwood Cadillac. He took the, he says, I'm we're building uh, 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 a multi-million dollar facility. I do not need a Cadillac. I am not a typical preacher. I need a Jeep so I can go on a construction site and make sure those contractors are using our money correctly. Take this thing back. Yeah. <laughs> and get me a Jeep for a third of the money and put the rest in the, in the church. Yeah. Are you with me? Very practical. Just pra he was practical that way. Yes. Are you with me? Amen. And so his motto was, if it's not practical, it's, it's not, not spiritual. spiritual. Yeah. Amen. Where are the men of God that have that heart? They're coming back. God's raising them up, right? Men and women of God, right amongst you. Amen. Yes. Where are the men and women of God that have that heart? Here right we here. are. Use us, Lord. You better know that. Amen. Amen. Stop looking around. Amen. It's you. Yes. Amen. The Jew is you. Amen. Let's keep going. 
How might the life of the church have unfolded differently had God not intervened? Let me say one last point too. Secret disclosure or either open exposure. Write that down. Yes. God will either expose you secretly or expose you openly. One of my favorite shows I like to watch when I just, I'm talking about just guilty pleasures. Don't judge me. I know, I know some of you take your spiritual high. I'm just talking one of my guilty pleasures I love to see because I love to see this modeled out secret disclosure or open exposure is the show Cheaters. <laughs> I love to see. I do. I don't like to see folk cheating on folk. That bothers me. I mean, I like to see them get exposed. I'm like, you know, that's what you get. Because they be thinking they just, they just be walking all cool and everything. They be like, no, I ain't doing nothing. We just here having dinner. We ain't doing nothing. They say, well, here's the video. What video? Here's the video. Is that you? Yeah, that's me, but uh, is that you? What? Yeah. They had a chance to come clean. Yes. And I heard one guy say, do you, <laughs> he told us, you don't believe that video for what I'm saying? That's true. <laughs> uh, it shows you in an uncompromised situation with this person, don't believe the video. Okay. <laughs> and then when they can't get out of it. But it's really your fault. You never did. Right, yeah, then it moved from, move from to your fault. To you. So you see that yeah. it's like God's given all this, this person all these times to get in truth. Yeah. And they refuse to Same walk in truth. I'm telling you, we're in a society that hates truth now. All the yes. way from the top of leadership, all the way down. Yes. And Christians will give leaders pass. It just gets me. I'm like, what? What type of Christianity is this? Because it's your guy. Because mm. it's your guy that you vote for, you're going to give him a pass. No, wrong is wrong. Now, whether it's Republican or Democrat yes. or independent, wrong is wrong. Amen? Amen. That's how the church has to stand. I don't care which leader it is. I don't care what their title is. People will say, well, Billy Graham's son said this, and this Family Policy Association, Christian Association said that. If, it's not, if it doesn't agree with the word, it's wrong. Still wrong. If the person lied, they lied. Right. We are equal opportunity word givers. Yes. Are you with me? If the people of God don't stand for truth, who will? Come on. Judgment begins in the house of God. Amen? Amen. Loved Obama. When Obama did things wrong, he was wrong. He's still wrong. People would look at me and say, how are you saying that? But he was wrong. He said he was wrong. He's going against the Bible. Yes, yes. And when he was right, he was right. Yes. And same with Trump. When he's wrong, he's wrong. Yes. Doesn't matter what the, and when he's right, he's right. Yes. But I see more wrong than him. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm praying for this man. Yeah. And I'm praying for the Christians. I pray for him every, do I pray for him every day? Yeah, that video too. Yeah, and I'm praying for yes. the Christians. Yes, yes, yes. The Christians that back this foolishness. Yes, yes. That will say, you know, that wrong is right and white supremacy is not a problem. Like, what world have you been living in? Mm. The whole foundation of America, when you find Americans say, you know, you, 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 the whole history, our whole history is thrown off how we say we've discovered America. How, you can, how can I go to your house, Lily, and say, I discovered this house, it is mine now. <laughs> and you living in it and paying mortgage. It's not happening. Not happening. You ain't going to come to my house and say, you discovered my house. Are you with me? I'm going to be like, get on out of here. Amen. We can be friends, but you got to leave when it's time to leave. Are you yes. with me? And so we've changed history. We've sanitized history. And so we don't understand. So that, so that, so that we, the, 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 because evangelicalism uh, and, 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 and white supremacy are strange bed, bedfellows. Mm -hmm. So you have to expose that foolishness. You have to, it, it, the way you, look, the way you break a stronghold, white supremacy is a stronghold over our nation. Yeah. The way you break that stronghold is always by exposure. The way you break, if you have a problem lying, go tell the truth. i never forget when I first got saved, I had a problem lying. The brother, uh, brother Barlow gave me this word. He says, Howard, every time you lie, you need to go back and tell the person that you lied to him. As soon as the Holy Spirit showed you that you're lying. Now, that was a long, those are a long couple of days. Because mm -hmm. every time I go in my prayer time, I made a lot of three lies that day. I mean, this is about oh, 25 plus years ago. And I'm like, man, I'll, I'll write down, I'll say, you lied this, you said you were fine, you were fine. Go back and tell them. I said, well, they don't really care about all that, Lord. <laughs> I said, go back and tell them. So I had to go back, you know what, when I saw you, you know, uh, and I, you asked me how I was doing, I said, I was fine, really feeling bad that day, I was really discouraged. 
throwing, throwing, throwing. He'd be like, well, that's all right. Oh, it's okay. But I said, no, no. God wants me to be truthful. Right. And I, you know, I have to do that about five or six times to several people. And after a while, guess what? I stopped lying. Yeah. Because that's embarrassing. I was like, I can't keep all, all doing this every day. Are you with me? So I said, let me just start. Tell- it's easier to tell the truth. Amen. Is it? Are y'all yes, with me? Yes, yes. So next one says, how might the life of church have unfolded differently had God not, not intervened? Anybody? Anybody? Pastor T, you want to say something? I would say darkness and deception would not have, would have entered in much greater. It would not have been a fear of God. But when you see people drop dead in front of you, it's a fear of God. Like, oh God, that could have been me had I been in that situation and not told the truth. Yeah. So it instantly instilled that God sees, he knows, and you can't hide. Does, it, does everybody understand that? Deception, you know, it would have been just a church of a bunch of fake folk. Yeah. Lying to the Holy Ghost. They can get by, I can too. Amen. Lukewarmness. You know, God doesn't call us to be lukewarm. Okay. And then uh, six, imagine a church, small group, workplace, a family in which people make themselves out to be more than they are. What might be some of the implications or consequences of this? Now, what I want to challenge you is this, too. If God speaks to you to give something, get an accountability partner. Are you with me? Get an accountability partner. Because as soon as God speaks to you to do it, it's going to be the devil coming to try to keep you from doing it. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. You know, I mean, I'm just saying there's needs that come up. There's so many times when I know God's uh, uh, told us to give a certain amount. And then after we do that, so many days my wife will come and say, honey, you know we have this going on. I'm like, yeah, but we remember what God said. Mm-hmm. I say, now what happens? Well, what happens? When we do what God says, what happens? God blesses above, He beyond. always go above. Most times it's right after we release it. Yes, right. Sometimes it's a week after we release Timing. it. And it's like, well, well, we got all of this. But remember, if what we have does not meet our need, so we we'll see. So we we'll see. This is not a game to me. This is, yes. this is what we live. People say, well, you're blessed. And so, because we sow, yes. we give. Yes. You see the glory, but you don't know the story. Yes. You don't know the sacrifice. You don't yes. know the 10 years of my life that I sold to inner city ministry, that we both sold to inner city ministry. She gave up her job at Honeywell. I gave up my job at IBM, and we sold our lives into yes. the generation. Sometimes yes. for three, five hundred, sometimes seven, five hundred dollars a month was a good month. Yes. And we're both college educated, both graduated, honors, and we could have been doing anything else. Yes. But we sold that to the generation. So there's been a sacrifice. So we learned how to walk by faith. Yes. Are you with me? And so when it was time for us to go back in the workforce, God put us right where we would have been if we had never left. Unheard of. Yes, yes. Unheard yes, of. Yes, Don't yes. tell me God won't back you. Yes. It surprised both of our parents. It did. Right, well, you know, you're going to go back in the workplace and you've been out for 10 years. What you going to do? How are you going to take care? Am, am, I, am I telling the truth, Angela? How are you going to take care of yourself? You're going to be poor the rest of your life. You're going to be a nun. What's, what's the problem? You're going to beg it <laughs> hand to mouth. Got back in the workforce. Can you do this church part time? Yeah. You still get a regular job like normal people. Well, I'll be normal. Just, like, okay. Get back in there, fifty thousand, boom, like she didn't miss a beat. Never had to then went up to eighty thousand. Then went up to ninety. Then went up. Are you with me? Gotta do that. Yes. Stop. Stop. Take God out your little box. Yes. And put him in that broad space that he belongs in, yes. where he's gonna explode you and take you beyond what you could ever ask or think. Amen. It's easy to give when you have it. <laughs> give it when you don't have it. Mm-hmm. I want to challenge you. Oh, man, I'm telling you, there's times when God tells me to give and I feel so empty. It's times, I feel good today, but it's times when I've had to get up here and I yeah. feel good. Is he saying this? No, no. It's times when I've had to get up in the pulpit and I feel <laughs> minute. Mm-hmm. But I tap into the source of God and he takes me bigger than what I could ever yes. think. And guess what? As I'm blessing you, he's blessing me. Yes, 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 yes. You got to give. See, no, and understand this. You got to move from, from being the student to the teacher yes. to the master. Yes. So many people, they want to stay students all their lives. They want to go church to church and be a student. You got to be the student 
Then the teacher, okay, part of a student, you become a diligent worker as a student. You help out the teacher. But at some point, you got to start giving back. Yes. And as you give back, there's a transfer that becomes, that occurs. Yes. And as you give, God gives you more. Yes. But not from them, but from on high. Yes. And you get a direct flow between you and God. Yes. Yes. He Are y'all with you. me? Yes. So many students don't learn how to be the teacher. Yes. Where well, you understand, I give out of my debt, and he increases me. Yeah. That's why I'm trading my sorrow, I'm trading my pain. Yeah. So you trade it, you get. It's like a, it's, it's a, it's a finance, it's an exchange that occurs. Conduit. It's a spiritual exchange, and you open yourself up. Now, what happens, so many times we look at what's ahead of us, and we get overwhelmed with what's right in front of us. Oh, this is scary. How are we going to make it? Oh, God. And see, what I do, is my wife and I, I'm notorious for this. I start reminding myself. I'm like David. I start reminding myself of the stuff he delivered us from. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I remember when we had a $6,000 bill, and God, we were only making $500 a month. Yeah. And God, you came through. Yeah. Amen. I was looking yeah. at folk, and they were borrowing money from me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm only got five hundred dollars, and I'm still giving them because I understand I'm I'm sowing, yes, I'm investing, and then you yes. came through debt free. I remember one time we were what what we, we were um hadn't got paid for three months. The church uh, uh, was was going through a dry season, and 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 one of the, and, and God raised up somebody up in Lithia Springs that we hadn't talked to in a year. Says, "Brother, you are on my heart. Yes. What? How can I help you?" Yes. So what do you mean? He said, I'm supposed to help you. He says, let me make you plain. Our church has a surplus. We're supposed to give our surplus to you. How much do you need? Yes. I said, tell me how much you want to give. The amount that he wanted to give was my three-month salary. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. Amen. I've seen God do that. Yes. Now, not one time during those three months did you hear me get up before the church and whine and complain about what we didn't have. Not one time did you hear me talk about, oh, God, I don't know how God's going to make a way. Now, one time I was still saying, what happens? Three things when we give. God is our what? Source and supply. supply. Two, what? Bring your seed, seed to Jesus. Jesus. Three, what? Ask the Holy Ghost what you need to give. Follow the direction of the Holy Spirit. We got to be consistent in season and out of season. Yes. Man is not our source. God is our source. Yes. Part of walking in truth is understanding that God is your source. Yes. For God you live and for God you die. Amen. Amen. You got to know that. Amen? Amen. Almost finished. I guess, well, you know what? I have to take it back. Write your name on this one. You got to be here next week because you get into the solutions. Oh, my God. Yes. We, we get on how to walk honestly. Huh? Huh? Don't we need that? Yeah. Well, honey, read a little bit of it. Just read a little. They need a little bit. Don't y'all need a little bit? Oh, I just need to let you just come on back. Give them this one, honey. Okay. Talks about re being respectful. Right here? Yeah, go ahead. One reason we lie is because we haven't learned how to speak the truth in difficult or awkward situations. Few of us have observed emotionally healthy communication modeled in our families or cultures, yet learning these skills is crucial for spiritual maturity. Healthy communication is marked by four qualities. It is respectful, honest, clear, and timely. Do you get that? It is respectful. It is honest. It is clear. And it is timely. Amen? Let me say it again. Respectful. Now, I'm not giving you just the, the right to just go and start being mean to folk. Mm. Okay? Because mm -hmm. you can be nice and, and tell to say the truth. But I said, say the truth in love. Yes. You know? Yes. I can say, <laughs> you know? You know? You know? You don't have to talk in implication. I have to go to my, uh, my chair. If the breath stink, I said, baby, you may want to, you know, uh, get some, get, let me get some Listerine for you. Right. But did you brush your teeth? Now, you come on. Why are you asking questions? Because what if they say yes? Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Be truthful. Yes. Amen? Amen? So look, read that first one. Think. Think before you speak. Carefully describe what you want to say. Be polite, not insulting. Take the other person's feelings into account. Disrespectful. That idea stinks. Respectful. Everybody agrees that that's disrespectful? <laughs> that is, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I mean, I hate it when we have brainstorms and somebody just shoots somebody's idea down like they're yes. perfect. And I'm like, how do, you, how, how do you expect anybody else to share an idea if, you know, it's, I said, okay, okay, we can, okay. 
Let's get some more ideas. Okay. Yeah. But don't be, yeah, okay, that's, we'll consider that. Okay. Keep going. With Respectful me. would be, that is an interesting idea, but I'm puzzled by dot, 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 dot. Okay. You see how that's a little better? Okay. You're being honest. You know? I mean, it's like you talk to your spouse. You always say it's unstupid. What does that communicate to the kids? That one is better than the other. Right. Are you with me? We got to be careful how we elevate ourselves because of our own insecurities. If we have a habit of always having to shoot somebody else down or be critical, yeah. it's a part, you're probably insecure somewhere. Yeah. So you got to get back into that space with God and say, okay, Lord, what am I insecure about? Am I scared about losing control? Am I insecure about not having the last word? Am I insecure? And then just really have that real heart to heart talk with the Lord. And once he shows you what it is, ask him to take it away from you. Yeah. Say, now, Lord, help me to, to take this away. And then go apologize to the person that you've been doing it to. That's the first, expose it. The way you deal with life, you've got to expose that thing. Okay? Again, we started off talking. I said one of the hardest things when to admit that I'm hurt. Uh, and even though we've been married 21 years, that's always a hard thing as a man to say, you know, I'm hurt. Because, you know, as men, we're taught to be strong and never be hurt. It's like, you know, oh, well, you hurt? Yeah, you ch you're bleeding all the way outside. <laughs> Hard out the chest. I feel good. Are you with me? You all around. I feel good. I feel good. I'm all right. Back ache. You can't barely walk. You all right in that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> Why are you walking like that? What do you mean I'm walking? Like what? Are you with me? Like Fred Sanford. Oh, I'm all right. We're taught, you know, to walk wounded as men, but it's times where you have to be able to unveil your wounds. Communication to a woman is what sex is to a man. Yeah. You figure that out. Communication to a woman. Men, you need to understand this. If you want to know the key to her heart, communication to a woman is what sex is to a man. I'll just leave it there. You got to figure that out. Amen? I'm keeping Amen. it PG. So you have to understand that if you want that connection, you have to know how to communicate. Even players in front of the street know how to communicate. And they talking a bunch of nonsense. Mm -hmm. They be talking a bunch of nonsense, but they be just they, they communicate. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so. So and you and you he said you believe what he you believe what he said? Well he was just talking to me and he was calling me every day and he making me feel special and he don't make me feel special and next thing I know I was like he was communicating, girl, oh girl, you look good today. Never forget somebody told my wife, I, I thank God for my, oh I thank God for my wife. I remember because she she come and tell me. But she was downtown, she was working at Georgia around you were around Georgia Tech uh, at the street down there, and the guy cat calls it, hey! Boy, does anybody tell you you look good today? Ooh, he's talking. With you. She says, "Yes, my husband tells me every day, and I'll let him know that you think so too." Yeah. And she called me. Said, "You believe this man just yelled out to me? Do you know this? Then you witness to him. Said, do you know Jesus?" <laughs> he said, "I better be careful." <laughs> and he goes, "Okay, that's all right. I'm going to keep on going." <laughs> Are you with me? You know, stay, don't give place. Don't give place to the devil. And I appreciate that. Amen. Hallelujah. I didn't get mad because that cat called her. I'm glad I got somebody that somebody want to yell at. Amen. <laughs> when I was younger, maybe when I was like immature, I'm like, no, thank God. I don't want nobody looking all homely that nobody want to think is pretty. <laughs> the Bible says she's my crown and glory. Amen. She's a reflection of me. Amen. So why I want to beat her down? Because see, the church has been guilty of this. We beat our women down. And then guess what? He give her up and go get this, the worldliest person. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, you got you all looking on, but get the worldly skirt. Can, can barely walk in the skirt. <laughs> I'll be like, what is that? <laughs> I want you look, I want you, I want you get as ugly as you can be. No. <laughs> Come on, have you Help seen it? Is it just more? Tell I've the truth. It, especially in traditional suit. Yeah. You can be as ugly as you can be. And you got the nicest suit. You got alligator shoes on. You got a dress that's like made out of one piece of fabric. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, my God, no. I want us to look good together, amen? amen. And I don't want her to look better than me. I do, do I tell you this all yeah, the time? I say, you need to look better than me. I want you to look better than me. You do. Because you're my crown and glory. My glory. To, so you need, I, I need to do whatever I can to make you look better than me. And I'm all right. Because are you with? Because you are. I'm, guess what? I see myself in you. Amen. Amen. 
Are y'all with me? Yes, that's right. That's amen. the Bible, amen? amen. Christ wants us to look better than him. Yes. Husband, love your wives like Christ loved the church. Yeah. Amen? Yes. And so when I'm walking out there, yeah, 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 you can look, but you can't touch. <laughs> Are you with me? You know, you go in the store and say, you can't get your hands off that. You can't touch that. <laughs> Same way. Amen? Amen. So I want her to be at her best. If you want to see if, if my household is right, look at my wife's face. Mm-hmm. Well, don't do always look at that. No, I won't say that because you may be going through some things <laughs> personally, but... <laughs> I remember a bishop used to say that. That may not be a good thing to say. Amen? Yeah, that's true. Because you may have some inner things going on that's beyond me. Amen? Yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> that's true, too. I'm just saying, no, I'm saying look you know, at my I, face. Sometimes I got some, some, of your, some issues that some people have told me, and I'm like, oh, boy, man, you see me up here, and I'm frowning because I may have got loaded down right before I came out to preach. People would say, Pastor, I just got to tell you one thing, and I think they're going to give me a, a compliment, and they tell me all hell is breaking loose in their life. Then I got to come up here and preach and be happy. Yeah. So I usually say, wait, don't talk to me till after yeah. I preach. Church, Amen. But every yeah, once in a while, somebody church. gets to me. They slip it on me and they be like, boom. And I'd be like, I know. okay, oh, now I'm heavy and I got to get up. I got to go back there and pray and get relief so I can, so I can share the love of God with everybody else. Amen. Yes. yes. Amen. So, you know, uh, we're going to stop it there. Write your name on these sheets. It'll be your sheet next week. Amen. Write your name on it. Be your on it. Sheet this, are you, is this helping you all? Talk to me. Is that helping you all? I've got to, oh, amen. Amen. The more we, again, pe- you know, and, and look, when people tell you who they are, believe them. Yeah. Hear me? When people tell you who they are, believe them. I'm a liar. Well, no, they get a lie. I'm not saying I'm a liar, but I'm saying when people say, you know, I lie all the time. Right. Listen. Where were you? Oh, you know, I was in traffic. You know, you saw the report there was no traffic that morning. You came the same way. <laughs> When people tell you who they are, believe them. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. And be quick, you know, be, uh, one thing, you know, if I have a problem with you, I'm going to come to you. Yes. Amen. Well, well I done honey? Yes. Yes. I mean, we're going to be like lovey dovey. It was the person I met had left the church and hadn't seen them, and they saw them in public, and I heard they were talking about me. I, the first thing I said, you know, they go, hey, Pastor, so so, want to hug me and all that. I said, okay. Okay, I hugged them and everything. I said, okay, now what's this you got with me now? What's the problem? Mm-hmm. Hey, what are you talking about? No, 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 no. You, you, what's, the, what, what's the problem? Right. I mean, let's just talk. I, I want to. I want to. Then I can really hug you and really mean it. Right. Authenticity. You know. And so I mean, we get to eat. So we're going to eat now. So why not go to share? I said, well, it's nothing. Really, nothing. When you talk to this person, you talk to this person. Talk to this. I have four people come to me saying that you got a problem with me. I've seen you four times, and you've never mentioned it to me. Right. And so, okay, well, you know, when you did this, and also, well, we really, it's not that important. Well, it must be important. Okay, this is what I need you. If it's not important, don't talk to other people about it. And go back and tell them. All right, but if it's important, yeah, and go back and tell them it's all right. Right, make sure you go back and tell them it's right. Right, but if, it's, if, if it is important, make sure you, we, let's, let's go and have the conversation because that's backbiting, that's gossiping. I really don't want to participate in that. Right. Amen. Are, are y'all with me? Yes. It's just not, it's just, you know, when I see you, I want to be able to hug you and embrace you and, be, and look at you in your eye and know that I'm all right and you're all right. Right. And if I say something to Brother Chris about you, I'm gonna, I, I, I said it to your face first. Amen. And you know I feel like this. So you, if he repeats it back to you, it's not nothing new. Amen. No, I didn't know Pastor felt that way. No, that's, that's no, no. So you got to, you know, are you, are you with me? Honest. I'm talking about honesty. Being honest, being true, being, you know, amen. And people appreciate it. People need real friendships. Yeah. They need truth. i never forget one time, honey, you were um, praying with somebody, helping them out, and you began to tell the truth. And they said, well, my friends have never told me this. They always tell me this, this, this. Oh, yeah. And they were all lies. Right. Why aren't you saying this about me? Sister? My wife was like, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not now, do, do you want a truthful friendship or do you want lie? Right. And I'm like, you know, and then afterwards, like, you know, it's, that's, uh, I did the right thing. I was like, yeah, you did the right thing. You can't lie to folk. Right. People want to, to be, be lied to. Just to stay your friend. You know? Yeah. If, you, you know, if, if, yeah. I've had people tell me, say, hey, I felt like you were mean to me. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Like, maybe, I, maybe this was going on my mind or whatever. I, I can fix that. Then you tell them, okay, you know, you were mean when you did Not me! Okay, wait a minute. You just told me that I was, okay, I'm trying to understand this. Is it not both ways? Or is it just one way? Right. Has to be both. Does that make sense? Amen.